Miss You by the Rolling Stones. This song is mainly made out of just two chords, the A minor and the D minor chord. And this is a great example of how we can take Rolling Stones style licks and techniques and put them into a bit more of a kind of 70s disco funk song. This is a great one, really simple riff. Hope you enjoy it. So if you just want to play along to this song as quickly as possible, all it is is two bars of an A minor chord and two bars of a D minor chord. For example, one and two and three, four, and one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And just repeat that and you can play it. But this whole song is kind of an exercise in minimalism. There isn't really even a rhythm guitar part. The rhythm guitar is missing to give the bass some space and the rhythm guitars are doing the Rolling Stones thing of weaving in and out of little lead lines. One of those lead lines is kind of the main hook of the song. <laughs> To me, from the first time I ever heard this song, this just seems like Keith Richards or the rest of the Rolling Stones heard Nile Rodgers, they heard Chic, something like... And they were like, we like that, but it sounds like hard work. Can we just take out, like, most of those notes and just leave behind the best notes. And that's kind of what they did with this riff. They simplified some, you know, a disco song. So. Now I'm not accusing the Rolling Stones of ripping off any specific Chic song. In fact, the genius is that this is infinitely more catchy than uh, so many disco songs. It's a real hook rather than just a rhythm guitar part that's needing a hook. Um, and I think it's amazing. I think that's what the Stones and the Beatles did so well, looking at the American guys and just picking the best. It's, it's an amazing thing. That's where the British invasion comes from, right? A bit like the British invasion of uh, YouTube guitar teachers, which is uh, rocking on now. I've recently hit 2 million subscribers. There's now an awful lot of other... Uh, British guitar teachers out there and making great lessons and I'm watching all you guys and I'm, I'm loving your stuff So it's a wicked community and we should all support each other And it's just echoing exactly what happened back in the 60s with the British invasion really so that riff We're on the middle two strings we start off string four Fret five to seven, seven, five on string three, seven, five, seven. Little bend down for style points. Just there. And vibrato on the last note if you can, if you guys can handle that. Just moving your fingers up and down, vibrating the string really, just like that. Finishing off, and that's it. We can play that riff an octave higher uh, in many places all over the neck, not least exactly 12 frets higher, which as soon as anyone learns kind of the minor pentatonic shape one, the next thing you should do is realised that all those same things happen again 12 frets up. It's literally a repetition, all the dots are in the same place and stuff like that. It's exactly the same again, guys. So you can do that with every riff or every lick that you know. Another position that's quite good to uh, play this in which might be a little bit new to you. He's kind of thinking of an A minor chord, moving it 12 frets up here. 
still just an A minor bar chord. String three, fret 12 to 14. 12, 14, 15, 13. And learning to play the same riff. All over the neck is one of the best things you can do to bring on your, particularly electric guitar playing, because that's how we get solos all over the neck and stuff like that. You actually want to start with playing exactly the same thing. Learn the same riffs and the same notes all over the neck, and then you'll be able to play them wherever you happen to be or wherever you want to go. So you can just play that to your heart's content all over this song. Um, but the other section that we do have is a chorus. It's a bit of a downbeat song, really. The chorus is, is kind of the whole song. But we have this musical break where we have an F chord, eighth fret, uh, A shape, so root five, bar chord, minor shape, and it's an E minor, and then D minor. You could play F, E minor, D minor, but the Rolling Stones don't tend to play open chords like this. Even when they do play open chords, they're normally in a different tuning. They're doing something to make them sound like the Rolling Stones. So that's all we're gonna go for for that section, because what I wanna focus on more of is showing you what we can do to sort of jam over this. Now that is a little bit fast, so let me just record it again a little bit slower so you can really hear what I'm doing, okay? So I'm playing the riff, but I'm gonna keep the open A note as a pedal, and then the open D note as a bit of a pedal. Just one note that's, we call it a pedal note when it's always ringing out. So it's just the root note of each chord. So I'm gonna do a loop of that and that last bit. They're doing this all the time on that original recording. That kind of idea, so let's put that in. So there's our riff. You can play the higher riff. Sounds like we need a bit more rhythm actually. Let's put the open chords in. Just like not even like strumming half the amount of strums you think it would need. Just take half of them out. And then you suddenly leave room for the drum. Ah, Charlie Watts. We've got the higher part. Okay, so to do some improvisation over this, and to make it sound Rolling Stones, you can't be playing like full melodic solos, otherwise it just doesn't... I just don't think that sounds Rolling Stonesy. What you actually want is... Just like a little bit. And then stop, again, half the amount of notes you think you need. Just, just like literally take out. that we're really thinking about that you wouldn't do in like a normal blues like when using Dorian mode blues scale hybrid 
The only thing you're not doing is we're not playing this note. We need to play that D minor note. That's a really powerful note. Just over the D minor chord. A minor. A minor pentatonic. D minor chord. A minor pentatonic, but with that note added. The minor third of that D chord, that D minor chord. You know, I don't play guitar like Keith Richards, I don't think anyone does, but that is a very Rolling Stones thing. And I think as soon as you have one guitar doing that, and then you have a second guitar part doing kind of the same thing but leaving space for each other, that's where you get the magic, that's where you get the Rolling Stones thing. So it can be difficult to do, but with a looper pedal, you can get close yourself, you can record yourself, you can have a jam buddy doing the same thing and just jam along, along to the original recordings really because they're absolutely fantastic. Hope you enjoyed that one. I do have a Keith Richards um, kind of Rolling Stones player study on my website. I'll leave a link to that uh, in the description below. And of course there are loads more Rolling Stones song tutorials on my YouTube channel and website.